You know, it's a solemn time, friends. I think of the song here by the rivers of Babylon and it's an old song. It's one that's been, that became very famous, uh, I want to say back in the 70s. And when we look at the scripture in Psalm 137, where the song was actually taken from, it is evident that in the Holocaust, such as in the movie, uh, the pianist it's, that I have showing on the screen here in the background, this is what happened to the Jews when they were during the Holocaust. So many times, those that were musicians, those that were that, that had the gift of singing or whatever the case it was, or violinists, they were always asked to play at the, at the uh, pleasure of the Germans or, or their captors. In this particular case here, this particular German officer actually had an appreciation for this Jewish man and he cared about him. And he was killed though, the officer was killed as a prisoner of war once the, the Americans had won the war and then the Russians fighting against the Germans. His life was not spared. But I think that God will remember this man, though, because of his love for remembering this Jewish man here. At any rate, though, my wife had an incredible revelation that I wanted to share with you guys. And I'll read to you the passage here from Psalm 137. It says, By the rivers of Babylon, there were we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there... They that carried us away captive required of us a song. That they wasted us and required us a mirth, saying, Sing us one of, uh, one of those songs of Zion. How shall we sing? How shall we sing in a strange land, they said. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her, her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. That means destroy it. Destroy it. All the way down to the foundation. And by the way, those uh, there, there's been many people that believe that uh, some of the the, the 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 films that have come out, especially in modern times, I know that uh, uh, Ken Klein was the one that actually made the first documentary about the temple not being there on the Temple Mount. Uh, now Rob Cornuke and I know Rob, I know Ken Klein, uh, and of course Chuck Missler have have brought this out more and more here recently that this is actually. A, um, that this is not where the temple was. But according to the prophecy even, even according to the prophecy, we find out that, uh, we find out that, that, that it was to be destroyed only to the foundation. So, and I find that interesting in itself that the prophecy claims that it would only be destroyed to the foundation thereof and no more. According right here, as it says in Psalm 137. Raise it, raise it even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that reward thee as thou hast served us. Daughter of Babylon, future generation. And by the way, the ones that destroyed Jerusalem, the temple to the foundation thereof, was none other than Titus, the Roman general, that ordered the destruction there in the old city of, of, this, of, the, uh, of the temple there. And it was destroyed to the very foundation. So that's why we still have the Temple Mount. The foundation is still there. Okay, but he ordered it to be destroyed, and Obadiah declares that it was Edom that actually required that, 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 re, that required it to be destroyed. And according to Psalm 137, again, it is Edom that is going to be destroyed at a future time for the destruction of the Jewish people being carried away. Then it says, Happy shall he be 
that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Now, let me pull something up here for you. My wife got a beautiful, beautiful revelation of this. Because someone had sent their, sent or, or made a post or something, I forget exactly what happened, but they had made a post and about, about uh, this, and they said, that just doesn't seem like God would be so cruel as to see little children uh, dashed against the stones. And my wife, the Lord revealed to her what the Word of God actually said. And by the way, it's not in the plural. It's in the singular. They'd be, they, they would dash your little ones against the rock. You see, it's not speaking of little children. You remember Mystery Babylon that we find in the book of Revelation? And that she is a mother. She has daughters. Harlots, as the Bible calls them. That's the denominational systems. The Babylonian harlots. her daughters, her children, her little ones. And when my wife shared with me today this revelation, her being sick like she is, I, I really, my heart, compassion for her, she's, she's sick with, with, with a flu as well. At the same time, her, her uh, arm, the rotator cuff has been torn. We're going for MRI tomorrow. Possibly surgery has to be done on her. She's very nervous over this. But then God gives her this remarkable revelation and she says to me, do you realize who it is that will dash their little ones or these denominations against the rock? She, I said, yes. I mean, because God, as soon as she mentioned it, the Lord revealed with me, I was seeing exactly what she was seeing. I said, yeah, I know. It's the two witnesses. She said, that's exactly right, the two witnesses. And what is the rock? The rock is Christ Jesus. Because what will he do? They will take their little ones, they'll take the denominational doctrines and dash it against the rocks and break up the false doctrines that they have. Amazing, isn't it? I love it. I love it with all my heart. God is going to break up these denominational doctrines. You know, think about it, friend. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Again, if you believe in this kind of ministry, stand with us, support this ministry. We do need your help. You can be a part of it. Just go to IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. You can donate there. Or we have our address on there on IsraelReturns.com under contact. Shalom and God bless you.